On the December solstice, we'll be able to witness something humans have not seen in nearly 800 years. Jupiter and Saturn will seem incredibly close to one another, looking like one single bright star. It's what stargazers called a Christmas star, or the Star of Bethlehem. Although in reality, the two planets will be hundreds of millions of miles apart. If you want to catch the rare event, look to the southwest about 45 minutes after sunset. The planets will dip just below horizon at about 7 p.m., so your viewing time will be quick. The two planets will be visible the entire last week of December. Now, I'm not making a claim that at the very instant of this conjunction, the bright light will break through and all our problems are solved. I think we're in a bit of a longer term process than that. My own personal belief is that we've got 5,000 years of toxic patriarchy and dominator culture to clear. And what's happening is instead of just a snap of the finger and we're clear, all of it has to be purged up, seen, processed, and recognized by the collective. So we're in the midst of that process right now. That's why the shifting from a dark age to a golden age is so messy because all the old mess has to be cleaned up. Today we're going to talk about the Great Conjunction 2020, December 21st, 2020, the Great Awakening, the Great Conjunction. Will the planetary movements change all of humanity? We'll take a look at the astrological ideas of the age of Aquarius, Saturn, Jupiter, the Christmas star, Solstice, Saturnalia, 2001 Space Odyssey. We'll take a revisit to 2012 and the big hoax to find out is this just another one of these uh, New Age psycho babble nonsenses. So let's get into it. And, and by the way, this is, as you may or may not know, astrology is not a strength of mine, as well as the tarot, not two of my strong suits. I know just enough to be dangerous. So I might, uh, and I, I, I try to hurry up and get this out to you guys, because as you know, I'm actually working on the Great Reset series, because that to me is the most important thing happening. Not to say the Great Conjunction is not important, and you'll, and I'll clarify that later. But the uh, the Great Reset is that's legitimately the the big plan. I posted part one, a two-hour book study of Klaus Schwab's The Great Reset COVID-19 book. But I've been dropping episodes two, three, four on my premium feeds. So if you're not on the team, get with it. Go to rockfin.com slash creator slash Isaac. Link in the show notes as always. That's where I'm dropping it all. Because while you're there, you'll also get access to Inside the Mind of a Conspiracy Theorist, a whole separate podcast I run about what it's like behind the scenes. And of course, you can always, as always, get it on Patreon, patreon.com slash Illuminati Watcher, where we're actually doing the uh, Dark Club, or yeah, the Dark the dark Path Book Club. Right now, you can still get on board with that. Still got a few, a uh, couple months left on that. But yeah. Show your support, all right? Get on the get on the winning team. Shout out to all my supporters out there. And, uh, you know, maybe it's not for you, and that's okay. That's okay. I still love you, too. That's all right. But yeah, check out the Rockfin thing, because uh, one, one subscription fee, and you get access to all the creators on there, not just me, not just your boy. But yeah, I've been, uh, I've been deep into the Great Reset stuff, and... I've also got a a fun little 10 minute, well, more like 6 minute little funzy skit show I'm working on, okay? More to come on that, so stay subscribed. I'm going to drop that on Christmas. That's right, I said it Christmas. The happiest of holidays. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's talk about conjunction. All right, so, and and like I said, like I prefaced this, all you uber granola hippies don't crucify me because i get something wrong here um what the origin of this show what is this from well i've had many many people reach out to me uh particularly the one that finally tipped the scales to me saying all right fine i'll look into it was uh mariah on patreon so shout out to everyone trying to 
tell me to look into this. I appreciate that. But basically what's going to happen is there's a conjunction of the planets Jupiter and Saturn. And it will occur on December 21st, 2020, which, by the way, is the winter solstice. Now, why all the new age granola hippies are freaking out is because it's going to happen at the zero degree marker entering into the constellation of Aquarius. Implying the start of the new age. And then uh, your, uh, your media outlets are saying, well, you know, these planets are going to be the closest they could possibly be. This happens every so often. And it's going to look like one big star. They call it the Star of Bethlehem. That's the short version of it. And we're going to get into all the details, all the occult symbolism behind all this. Now, I went to I went to many sources. Two primary sources, though, if you wanted to dig into some of the ideas. Bustle.com, they had an article on the Great Conjunction and Aquarius affecting the Zodiac signs. And then uh, Duncan Trussell, who had the Midnight Gospel Netflix series, which I still owe you a show on. I've got all the notes. i got the clips. I just got to do it. Needless to say, 2020 has been insane. But Duncan Trussell has a podcast. He interviewed a uh, a guy named Connor Habib, who's saying, you know, he's espousing this idea that you'll find in circles of people talking about this, about there's this whole idea of a massive shift in consciousness, an awakening, a great awakening, as it were. Connor Habib's a porn star. Not to say there's anything wrong with that. But he also says eating food is poison too, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> so, and some of the stuff he says I like, you know, I tried listening to the whole thing and I'm like, I don't know about this guy. Some of the stuff he says I like, but I have a hard time with some of these people that go so granola, so woke, reading the stars, because they, to me... They're too vague and too non-committal, and you can't disprove them ever. It's just not possible. It's like it's like arguing politics with people, okay? And we do overcome it to some extent, and we also overcome like the Wi-Fi signals, five G, all that kind of shit that is coming. But it becomes more and more difficult to take all of that in, and so we're gonna have to do training, which is mostly spiritual training, to generate the forces within us that can overcome the things that enter okay. into us. Yeah, and we can do that with almost anything, by the way. But it it takes because we're the favored we're the we're the favored things on this planet. I mean, we're we're the addresses of the consciousness of God here. So we've got to go into a kind of. Uh, but we've got to go into a kind of training to make that happen. What does that training um, look like? Hmm. Well, huh. Hmm. it's different for everybody. But anyway, those are two good sources I found. But I dig, I dug into my archives of occult symbolism and stuff. But let's talk about it. What what are we talking about here? We're talking about the movement of the age of Aquarius, right? It's the age of connective global consciousness. I talked about this in Sacrifice Magic Behind the Mic. Your boy, uh, Mr. Gates, previous guest on the show, he talked about this on Haterazzi, the Jupiter, right? You remember that? But basically, like I said before, Saturn and Jupiter, they're going to align on the solstice and look like a, a double planet. A double rainbow. Remember that? Remember when we made fun of the guy for uh, the viral video about the double rainbow? Simpler times. But now Saturn, it's going to enter this spot in the sky in the cosmos of the Zodiac called the sign of Aquarius on December 17th. Then Jupiter catches up on December 19th. And they will uh, both meet. On December 21st at the zero degree marker of Aquarius. Now, if you look around online, because like I said, I'm a novice with this astrology stuff. I've also read people say they're leaving uh, Sagittarius and entering Capricorn. I don't know, but the consensus seemed to be they're entering Aquarius. And uh, that they're leaving Capricorn, which is associated with the devil and the tarot system, which will play a role. We'll get into that. 
Now, what's up with these planets? Saturn and Jupiter are the two largest planets in our solar system. And they get close every 20 years. But to do a full conjunction, to join together as seen from Earth, when they match the same lot, longitude is very rare. The last time this happened was March 4th, 1226. A long time ago. Almost 800 years ago. So me being curious, I thought, well, what happened last time this happened? I, I went to uh, the Wikipedia page for March 4th, 1226. Nothing. Doesn't really, I mean, stuff happened, but like nothing out of the ordinary that sh- stood out to me. But, you know, these uh, these woo-woo mega granola types, they're, they're sure this thing is going to be a game changer. It'll be a cryptic game changer, I believe. They say, oh, it's a shifted consciousness. Something that's completely unmeasurable, by the way. But don't worry. The, uh, the altering of everyone's consciousness in the year of 2020 with a global pandemic that literally changed everyone's lives, billions of people's lives, and the fundamental structure of how every single human being goes about their day will have nothing to do with this. It's all going to be because so two planets a bazillion miles away are getting close to each other. That's what's going to be shifting consciousness. Two planets <laughs> so, so far away that you need an app to figure out where they are in the sky. They're almost touching tips, and that's going to change everything as we know it. Okay. All right. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm skeptical of this stuff. Now, they're calling it the Christmas star in the mainstream media. A war on Christmas? Yes, I think so. They're suggesting that this is the final ushering of the New Age. This is the climactic ending of bringing about the New Age from the Aeon of Pisces to the Aeon of Aquarius, which, as you know, the Aeon of Pisces is associated with the fish, which is symbolic of Jesus Christ, who made fishers of men. He evolved mankind. Well, now it's time to move on to the age of connected global consciousness. The age of Aquarius. And this idea goes back to 1614. Johann Kepler. He said that the conjunction occurred as the star of Bethlehem. Which marked the birth of Christ. Again, the age of Pisces. People are are, uh, theorizing that there was actually a conjunction of three planets back then. And this is the allegory of the three wise men. And all of this, of course, supports the idea that all the Bible is just, you know, metaphorical, allegorical, celestial movements, which is the occult version of history, as we'll discuss. But they say that we were under the rule of Capricorn previously. And, you know, Capricorn's got those authoritarian vibes, you know? But Aquarius, that we're not going to have that anymore. We're going to have the global connective consciousness and humanitarian causes, and it'll be great. Now, could it be? This is what old Santa Claus, old Santa Claus is saying in COVID-19, the Great Reset at the World Economic Forum, as I've been ranting and raving about on the supporter feeds with the Great Reset shows. Could it be? That these New Age granola astrology types are correct. And Klaus just doesn't describe it that way in the book. He knows the truth is that these planets are going to make this shift in consciousness. And he's going to try to say, well, it's because of technology. It's because of people being locked in their home for a year. It's going to be because of this, because of that, but a boom, but a boom. Could it be, right? Hey, look, like I always tell you, don't. I don't know. I'm not the purveyor of truth here. I'm just telling you how I see it. I'll give you the facts and then my opinion. But that seems to be what they say. They say, uh, as above, so below, right? The cosmos, the macro, affects life on Earth. And look, and to defend the idea before, you know, because I, I, be, I can be persuaded. But to defend the idea that, yeah, some planets a bazillion miles away are going to really affect life on Earth... Me and Mrs. Weishaupt drove up to um, 
this shithole town named Rexburg, Idaho. <laughs> and sorry, no offense to everyone living in Rexburg. It's a fine little town. I'm just joking. But we drove up there for the great eclipse that happened in, what was it, 2017? And it, in fact, blew my freaking mind. Okay. Well worth it. Well worth eight hours of traffic. To see and feel that eclipse, it uh, it was quite literally worth what all these star nerds have been saying. And I wasn't super into it. I just thought, well, it's close enough. Let's do it. And in fact, I will, I'm, I'm planning, we'll see what happens. I'm planning on going out to Ohio to hit the next one in, what was it, 2024? And you can see when it, when it eclipsed, when the moon blocked the sun, to feel it go dark and then to feel it got like chilly. And you think, I mean, the sun's pretty far away too, right? And you think, and, and the realization hit me of like, I don't know, maybe these, Maybe these as above, so below nerds are right. Maybe these planets and their movements have greater bearing on my life and my mood and my emotions and my intuitions than I thought. But like I said, I'm not very well versed in astrology. So the jury's out basically for me, for me, just for me. Now the solstice, this is December 21st, an important day. An important day for the occult. So like your year is marked out with two equinoxes and two solstices, right? Equinoxes are equal parts day and night. Solstice are the other way around. Shortest and longest day. Where the winter solstice, that is your shortest uh, hours of light of the year. Because on this day, the... Well, and we'll get into that here. But when you look at the occult version of history, like your zeitgeist stuff you saw on the Netflix or whatever, they think that, well, this is the real story. This is the mystery religion story of Christ. Jesus Christ wasn't real. And they believe, they point to the movement of the sun because the sun, like Christ, goes down to the weakest point and dies for three days. And the sun, and the sun, uh, its movement in the skies, it goes down and is resurrected at the Southern Cross. Three days after December twenty-first, <laughs> I know it's it's kind of a longer story, but recall that on a lot of our shows we talked about the mystery religion. They believe Osiris is the real god, the sun. S U N. And of course, it ties into Lucifer. Turns out Osiris is really Lucifer. That's a you know according to Bill Cooper and some other OGs. But the idea is that the sun S U N enters each sign of the zodiac at thirty degree intervals, right? Because the zodiac is you got to picture it as a circle, three hundred sixty degrees, and they chop it up into twelve equal sections, twelve slices of the pie with thirty degree intervals called houses. And they say, well, you know, Christ started his ministry at age 30. That's symbolic of the 30 degrees. And the sun travels, they, they say, well, the sun travels about one degree a day and, and processes through the uh, the full zodiac. 365 days, 360 degrees, close enough. And the mystery religion believes that Christ was the actual sun, S-U-N, the son of God, that moved 30 degrees or 30 years through Capricorn and entered the house of Aquarius at the age of 30, 30 degrees when he started his ministry, which is why John the Baptist baptized him with water because John the Baptist is symbolic of the Aquarian water carrier. Christ, the age of Pisces is here to bring about the Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, the water carrier. And the beginning of winter, which occurs on December 21st with the solstice, this is the point where the sun is as far south from the equator as it possibly could be. And to all these old dumb people, they thought they thought the sun was going to die. They were worried. Because, you know, the sun was tied to the crops, which was tied to life. That was it back then. That was all they worried about, was trying to feed themselves to make it through the winter. 
So the son, they were worried. They would watch and track because they didn't have iPhones back then, right? They didn't have uh, Netflix. So they just watched stars. And they watched the, the sun move. And they were like, damn, there it goes. And it died. It stayed there. From the appearance on Earth, it looked like it went as far away as it possibly could. It's freezing ass cold outside. They're making uh, they're making snowmen with sand out there in the Mesopotamia, and the sun's down at the very bottom. It's dying. Three days for three days they they watched and they waited and they thought, damn, that's it. It's gone, and then boom, it's back. It's like uh, Leo DiCaprio in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not leaving. But the sun would start making its ascent back towards the equator, bringing longer days, warmer weather, the crops, the life, etc. So the cultures, they would all celebrate such a thing. And this is where you get the Saturnalia stuff. This is where you get the cult of Mithras in Rome. Uh, You ask, what is the cult of Mithras, Isaac? Well, lucky for you, I've got three hours of shows on Raised by Wolves, the HBO series, which is all about the cult of Mithras. The Roman secret society. The secret religion. Because that's tied into all this. So we're not going to dig through that again. Because there's, like I said, lots of information on those shows. So thus, on December 23rd, the Romans, they would celebrate Saturnalia. And this is, of course, the worship of Saturn. Known as Kronos, a.k.a. the opposer, a.k.a. Satan. Because Saturn was the planet that was, it was the sixth planet. At the time, it was the outermost planet. They didn't realize we had a couple others. No offense to Pluto, which apparently isn't a planet anymore. We only had eight planets. But they only had six back then. And this was where uh, the sixth planet was, 666, right? It was the adversarial planet. It symbolized measurements, constraints, time and measurements. That's why he's Father Time. That's where you get your Kronos stuff from. Because in the occult history of the world, Saturn needed to be the opposition force to condensed matter from the spirit world. So the spiritual had to be condensed into the material world. And now we need to go the other way. Which, again, if you're listening to the Great Reset series, I believe it's part two, Old Santa Claus... He talks about this. The fourth industrial revolution is going backwards because we went from taking the material world and basically spiritualizing it when we took compact discs and made them MP3s, right? We went from physical mediums to digital mediums, material to spiritual. And now we're going to kind of go the other way, he says. The fourth industrial revolution will be about Going from thought, the spirit world, to material. We're going back. Which may be confusing, right? But what do you, look at uh, 3D printers, right? That's what we're talking about. The next focus will be on thoughts creating reality. Uh, you have to listen to my part two. That's on part two. We talked about the fourth industrial revolution and how it supports Crowley's Aeon of Horus, which is your age of Aquarius and all that stuff. Now, where were we here? Okay, so Saturn, they started worshiping Saturnalia. Birthday of the unconquered sun, again, reference to Mithras. The Romans, they, of course, at some point there, right, they conflated the birth of Jesus Christ into this celebration because they needed to get the Roman people on board with it because the Roman people were worshiping a whole wide um, widespread of uh, deities and their pantheon of gods. You kind of got to pick and choose which one you wanted. And then, then, then here comes the uh, the Roman Con- was it uh, Constantine's like, hey, wait a minute, we're doing one god and one god only, Jesus Christ. And they didn't like that. So to ease the transition, they conflated some of the holidays. So Saturnalia became the birth of Christ. Which was ironic because Saturnalia had debauchery of all kinds. You had the gambling and they were they were feasting, gluttonous feasting, having orgies, drinking the booze. They'd even do a role reversal where the slaves 
were served the feasts by the masters. And this is why you have to do that at those awkward office Christmas parties while your boss has to serve you the food. At least we don't have to deal with those this year, right? Got to make uh, lemonade out of these lemons, right? You don't got to see those losers for Christmas parties anymore. <laughs> at least not this year. Now, Saturnalia, <clears throat> unless you're, uh, what, Dave Ramsey? Dave Ramsey's out there gazelle-focused, but he's uh, he's having a big holiday party. They don't care. Now, Saturnalia, this marked the return of power to the sun as it made its journey back up into the sky towards warmer weather. And again, it has to do with the god Saturn, the agricultural Kronos deity, bringing the crops back to life. And this goes back even further. They think that Saturn was a deity that reigned during the Golden Age. If you listen to some theorist, uh, was it David Talbot? I don't know. I wrote about this many, many years ago. I believe it was in my first book, A Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory, which, I don't know if you know this, you can get it for free. Link in the show notes. All you got to do is go to IlluminatiWatcher.com slash start. Sign up for that email list that I manage and I do not sell. You'll get a free copy of that book. But I talked about the golden age in that book that you're going to get for free when you go to the website. But yeah, they think that Saturn had this purple sheath of light over the whole earth and things were great. So you see, that's where Santa Claus and the other elitists, they want to return to the golden age. Because for them, it sure is a good time. For you, not so much. So that's Saturn. Next, you got Jupiter. What's Jupiter all about? Well, this plays a role in the occult history, too. Old Zeus there. Old, old the, the father of the sky, Jupiter, was part of the 2001 Space Odyssey monolith show we did recently. And I'll, I'll give you the brief recap. Because as you know in the story, 2001 A Space Odyssey, they find the monolith and it evolves the apes into uh, mankind through the alien intelligence. Because the Arthur C. Clarke who wrote the book actually had the the great monolith that evolved man through David Bowman out at Saturn. But in the film version, it's Jupiter. Because Kubrick said he couldn't recreate the rings. There's theories that otherwise, but anyway, the, this is the, um, this is the same. Okay. So the model has the perfected dimensions, right? But it aids in evolution. The, the astronauts go out that way. David Bowman's the only astronaut living through it. He finds the big monolith out by Jupiter and he goes into the wormhole. My God, it's full of stars. He wakes up in the alchemical transformation hotel to become the star child mankind evolves through the alien intelligence out by jupiter then in the sequel 2010 a space odyssey you find out that there's not just one monolith there's a ton of them these are monoliths controlled by the aliens consciously through the higher dimensions which is what i believe the aliens are by the way i believe that the aliens are extra dimensional beings Because as much as I don't like the idea of us evolving transhuman into the transhuman digital matrix stuff, that's where we're headed. That's where we're going. A thousand years from now, that's us. Maybe less. But for sure, right, if there's an advanced race of beings out there, they've already done this process. They've already reversed the process and spiritualized matter. Like I always say, these occultists, I mean, they're not always wrong. I don't agree with it. I don't like it, but the writing's on the wall. Through technology, this is happening. So anyway, these aliens, they're in a higher dimension, and they increase the mass of Jupiter by assembling an infinite amount of monoliths, and guess what happens? It creates a, uh, it blows Jupiter up, and it becomes a brighter sun than the one that we are familiar with, And they call it Lucifer. Doesn't it at all make sense? Now, in reality, there is a project NASA's uh, run called Galileo back in the day that orbited Jupiter. It confirmed there's an ocean of liquid water. There's 